All right, we are playing against Brayden again with Brendan Candio's Amber Ruby deck. And we have a pretty neat one. I'm going to go ahead and just put back my expensive stuff. Keep the Lantern, keep Tinky Bell. Lantern and Tinky Bell is nice. All right, we'll go ahead and just ink a nine drop. What do you think? What do you think? We just ink a nine drop. Here we go. We can play for that one later. We don't got to play for it right now. Prince Eric. This one's nice. Kind of has death touch. All right, so I'm going to play Lantern. And I think that means I'm just going to ink my two drop. Especially because the Chernobog followers can just trade into it. And I'm playing Lantern this turn, and for the rest of the game, I'm playing four drops, basically. This deck's really cool. It uh, ramps nicely with uh, Lantern. Has a couple of good shifts with the Queen. I like that it has some good, you know, come to play effects with Tinkerbell. All right. I think we're just going to play Lefo as Ink. And we're just going to play Tinky Bell. Who do we want? Probably another Tinky Bell. All right. Here we go. Next turn, we can play the Queen, and then we get into a spot where they can basically never quest again without getting dumpstered. And it's a 4 3, so it doesn't die to a Medusa. Chernabogs. Mim's going questing. This Prince Eric, I'm not really sold on it. All right, since we have two big queens, I'm going to ink the small one. Play a big one. And I don't think I want to quest with Tinkerbell. Just wait, and then if Brayden wants to quest, we get to quest with the queen and do a plus four minus four so we get to squash, squash whatever thing they play. Rabbit. This is the first time I've gotten to play Madame Medusa. I know how it feels to get hit with a Madame Medusa. All right, it's a little too late for Doc. I'm going to go ahead and do some of the Mims. Bye. And then we'll say go, I think. Both these characters draw a card when they die. So now we want to try to bust them up for free, but instead the Merlin Rabbit gets bounced, and a lot more cards are drawn for Brayden. We're going to have to sweat through that card advantage late into the game. It's a lot more difficult to do without a whole new world in your deck. But this is not a whole new world deck. I play mostly whole new world decks. Graveyard's empty. Nothing really to do. I'm going to quest with the Medusa. And we're going to play Tinky Bell. You can draw something and just ink it. Could just take the stitch so we have a cool play next turn. I think that's great. And then I will play Queen as ink. And take up. And now this Medusa will at least bait a trade with Mims. But with all the bouncing stuff, we're not getting to... Ah, uh, crab. We got crabs chat. We do have Hades to get it back, though. That's pretty nice. Whoa, friends being played there? This has to be a bounce. Mims, bounce, Mims. Yeah, okay. That makes sense. That would have been potentially disastrous for Brayden. All right, let's go Lantern. Stitch carefree. Draw a couple. This thing has Rush. We can't play it this turn. Let's have a lot more strength, but I think we just they're just not going to be vulnerable ever. So let's just ink it. And uh, I just really don't feel like questing is the move. Maybe we quest with the Tinkerbells? Bells. 
We'll just freeze the queen, let them challenge the Tinkerbells, and then my stitch gets to go. Plus, we can do Hades, Tinkerbell, and just kind of go forever. That's kind of the way the deck is built. It's just, like, extremely difficult to run out of cards. Everything kind of replaces the, itself. This Eric does kind of feel out of place. It's pretty cool, though. I haven't played with it before. All right, well, worst nightmare. Huh. All right, I'm going to quest. I'm going to shrink this thing, buff this thing. I kind of just want to quest with this also. I think I'm going to. I think I'm just going to play Medusa, or Mufasa, excuse me. The king, I must give him his respect. And then maybe, maybe we just play, I think I'm just going to play Hades also. I'm just going to get back another Tinkerbell and just kind of chain those together forever. Here we go. We're so far behind on cards. I think we just need to pressure with damage and draw cards. Seems good to me. Just my first impressions playing with the deck. Uh, this is a Brennan DeCandio creation, and he's a great deck builder, great player. I look forward to trying out his brews. All right, doesn't look so bad so far. Merlin crab again. It's the same crab, but you know, we're still questing. We out here, we out here questing. See what the top card is. Oh. Dang. Tinkerbell. Ooh, draw a little Maleficent. Dragon. Uh, kill maybe? Or just quest? Just quest. Let's just quest, baby. All right, another Mufasa. The king! If they don't be prepared. All right, that's fine. Yowza. Top card. Oh, Maleficent Dragon! Yes, please! Select. Uh, so this can attack, so let's just kill that since it can attack. Bang. How's that feel? How's that feel, Brayden? Oh, he can't hear me. He can't hear me talking mad smack. I hope he watches this video. Oh, yeah, you better start punching in damage. Better. This Medusa is so dead. I wonder, is it though? Maybe I don't play anything. Are they gonna bounce the Medusa? Okay, so I think I just Medusa their Medusa or their Mim, and we save the dragon for post sweep. I think I'll just say go. All right, no, be prepared, please. Please, no, be prepared. Be prepared is probably game over. We could play Eric. Start questing with it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I know. They know we have this monstrous dragon. Think some Maui. The crab. The crab for your thoughts. We'll do so this one. Alright, Pan's in there. Get in there, Pan. I guess Pan goes ink. I don't know, maybe we don't need ink pan. Pumps my Medusa. The fool. Your turn. Alright, Melanstrous Dragon. Eats my Peter Pan. Not nice. Medusa only questing for one? Tragic. Dragon your dragon. Here you go. 
My 14. No being prepared. No, ma no Maleficent. Alright, just a Merlin Goat. I don't care much about that. I'm winning that race quite handily. Thank you. Whew. Gain, gain. The Ink of Maui. Actually, I should probably just Maui the castle, huh? They didn't have it last turn. Hope they don't have it this turn. Cross fingers? They have be prepared? Yes! One of... Queen of Hearts. Okay. Nine drops. Go back. They are ink. Okay. Queen. Six drops on inkables. Keep the queen, maybe. Alright. Tinks and Queens. That's the name of the deck now. Tinks and Queens. All right, we're just going to ink a bunch of these expensive things. Chernabog. Chernabog. Okay, so this is a 1-3 that can punk this pretty well. But, uh... I think we just go... Pass? I really think maybe we should just ink this, but... I don't want them to know that I have this. All right, maybe I'll just use this to trade with a Chernabog. That way, Brayden doesn't get a free quest. If he wants to quest, he might want to sack it. Or just bounce it with... Bounce it with the old two-drop. Yeah, that makes sense. It always feels bad when they do that. Not... It feels bad. Like, I feel bad. Like, I'm losing. Gain one, draw a card. That's nice. All right, we're going to go... Uh... I guess this uh, rush character here, the Queen of Hearts rush, impulsive ruler. I think we can just maybe Mother Gothel, and I kind of want to quest. I want to like bait the Rafiki into pushing, and then Chernabog quest maybe sticks around looking to trade, and then I get to eat it with the Pan Man. Draw two, okay. Yep. Oh, fall into my trap, Yugi boy. Don't. No! No! Why would you sacrifice board position like that? Oh my. Okay, so I'm gonna ink the queen, because I need ink, and we're gonna quest. And I'm not gonna play this, because I need guaranteed ink for another tink. That's my theory, and I'm sticking to it. The hook. All right, Maui's coming next turn, probably. So let's just go pan, tank. I guess we'll do uh, Rapunzel. And now I don't want to quest, because I don't want to get hit with a, a hasty creature. So we'll just pass. And then we'll have a nice little turn next turn. If we draw an inkable, we get to go lantern into Rapunzel. And I will quest after I heal. Chernabog. All right, Unforcho. But we will just go ahead and play the Rapunzel. Oh, I thought we were going to miss on Inkable. I was so scared. All right, uh, Gothel. They can hook, I guess. Tink, maybe two? Yeah, why not? Why not? Get in there, Tink. We got so much recursion and so few inkables. <laughs> Maui, rats. Maui's gonna crunch us. There's not a whole lot we can do about it either. Our deck is still prepared to fight Maui on the combat front. That's fine. Rabbit. Didn't even get to draw a card, huh? And Turnabog Quest 2, does Turnabog sack? Oh, gladly trade. Gladly trade, okay, okay. Don't go running scared now. All right, so I believe it's Double Lantern, Ink Rapunzel into, maybe just Tink, yeah. All right, Ink. Gotta get these lanterns down, because our hand is really mana-hungry. 
Ink. Tink. We'll draw the whale. Whale's large. Okay. He's the chewer upper. Now I think I just don't quest. I don't want to let Maui eat anything for free. But we got Madame Medusa to clean up a medium-sized thing here. Oh, this is bad news for us. We do have the whale, though. Oh, we're in trouble. We're in trouble. Maybe less trouble now. Uh, he big. We have to ink well to play the Dusa. It's probably fine. Well doesn't have rush, so we can't pressure the castle very well this turn, no matter what we do. So best course of action is likely just kill Jim Hawkins. No attack into the castle. Let Dragon try to answer. Makes sense in my brain. Get to draw so many cards. Two extra. Except I can't tap the dragon. I really need to be able to kill this castle or else I think I lose. Nice. I'm dead. That'll be the end of me. Queen's Castle drawing too many free cards. I've never seen it look this good. I do see it look good all the time. Don't get me wrong. But it looks excellent here. My deck is... <laughs> Not very good at killing it, but we can kill both these characters, I suppose, so that's nice. Let's, ah, maybe we have a shot. We still need to pressure these castles after, but uh, we'll go Medusa, pop the Pinocchio. And they're going to get a card either way. And then I will go 7-drop Carefree Surfer for extra ink. And Tinkerbell, I guess. No, I can get back Monstrous Dragon. Just go ahead and do that to, like, basically cut off their next uh, play if it's not Wrath. But we lose to these two if they have Wrath, so we have to play into it. There's no option. Oh, they didn't have it. Praise. We have a shot. A couple rabbits make it kind of difficult. Rafiki. Okay, so that's the one we're pressuring first. Pongo. I don't. I really don't want to burn. But they're gonna draw a card anyway. All right. Well, this can happen no matter what. I'm taking out one of these castles. And I guess we go for. Dragon. Can I cancel? No. I regret going for Dragon. Should have just went for Double Tink. But they didn't have the Be Prepared last turn. And I'm pretty on the ropes in terms of uh, if they have Be Prepared, I'm just like in some trouble. I'm going to go ahead and play Pongo. I think the two Tinker Bells will give me enough to do. And I just want to hit my inks. But we have to deal with the castle, and we're just dead to the speed prepared no matter what. Damn. All right, there are 12. Let's see if we can find... Oh! Let's start with the Tink. And I guess we'll go for Surfer. And I'm going to go Maui and Smush. Let's see, go. It's been a fun match so far. Both these decks can play really long games. Brennan built this deck in such a way where it can just grind with the best of them. But that's where the uh, goats and stuff in the Queen's Castle, the aggressive elements of the Ruby Amethyst really come into play. All right, well, it's bouncing Merlin and not Goat, so we're not dead yet.
All right, Maui down. It's okay. All right, so let's start with Kinky Bell. We'll take a Monstrous Dragon. Play my man. Get the castle. I'm gonna go ahead and ink this queen. It's rather lackluster at this juncture. Now we can use Maleficent to pressure her. And I do not care about a Tinkerbell dying. Let's see what the other four ink is used on. Rabbit. Rabbit is not goats. And therefore, I am fine. All right, let's go. All right, do I want to ink this Maui? I kind of want to ink this Maui so that I can do uh, Carefree Surfer Plus next turn. Let's just continuing to hope that we do not get hit with a Be Prepared again. Just like a Evergreen, right? Just please. Yeah, there's another Be Prepared. All right, well, let's hope we draw a chain thing. Hades or something, we might be able to still get this Rockstar off. Or the Carefree, rather. All right, I'm just going to play Lefa. We can play Medusa and Stitch next turn. No, well, it's not going to help. All right, we're in the thick of it. Maybe this should have been Mufasa. Yeah. So hard to fight through all this. <laughs> and Medusa back, too. Gross. Oh, big boy. Okay, I've never seen this card before right now. That's pretty cool. Love the Mims. Shuffle them all back. Why don't we just shuffle them all back in? That was maybe the coolest card I've ever drawn. Turn a bog. Evil doer. Never seen it before. Never seen it in action. Didn't know what it did until it hit my hand. 10 drop 9 9. For each character in your discard pile. Costs one less, so it's basically a free, enormous character. And still, it is not enough. The Ruby Amethyst beatdown continues. Maleficent Monstrous Dragon. We can do one of our own, though. All right, well. Here is Hades. Oh, it's not in my grave anymore. All right, Chernabog. Like, oh, that was incorrect. That was all sorts of incorrect to do. I will quest. I don't know, just cast my 9-9. Shuffle Medusa back in. Just gonna not ink Maui because I might want to trade it for a character. Probably dead. We'll see. Fish hook to eat? Wow, you're at 15, homie. Just quest. Just quest. How can I possibly win? Oh, how can I possibly win this way? I think questing was still better. Maybe, maybe not. This does shatter all of my positions. But, uh... You know, I oddly... I mean, I don't feel safe. <laughs> Alright, you win, you win. You and you and you and you and you and be prepared of our own. Hmm, I don't think so. We need some uh, inkables. Inkables. Any inkables? Maybe I'll just keep this to ink it. Keep getting screwed by an inkables. We do want a lantern on two. We don't really need the Lufo. Can use that in some spots, but I don't think Brain's gonna walk into our shenanigans. All right, I'm just gonna ink the nine. It's going to be way... I mean, maybe I should never ink it. Maybe it's just too powerful for the matchup, you know? All 
Rafiki. Well, it's probably still Ink Lafu. Is it Lafu or Lafo? Everyone, I don't know. I got, I said it once, one time, and people made fun of me because I've never seen the movie. Or I just didn't remember the character. I think I had seen the movie. I just didn't remember the character. Uh, all right, so this is interesting. I think we just played Tinkerbell. And then I guess we hold on to Carefree. We can navigate to Carefree. But we will draw Medusa. Or we can draw Ink. I think I like the Medusa though. Be a nice little, we'll just ink the Rapunzel next turn and go uh, Lantern, Peter Pan, hit the Rafiki or something. Depending on what Braden does, obviously. Cusco, question. No. Yes. All right. Anyone getting bounced? Ink the bog. Oof. All right, your ink. And you're in. We'll just kill the Cusco so it stops questing. And then I think we just hold the Tink. This strikes me as a card that could be very strong in Amber Steel. Getting any character off the top is nice. It doesn't find songs, obviously. It's like the opposite of Ariel. But it's a four, and it's a good four off of Lantern. And I just think it needs something to sing, because I just don't feel like I have much to do with it. All right, so we'll just keep questing with Pan, I suppose. Yeah, it doesn't have evasive. But it's a 3-3. Three, three. We can go Pongo activate, or we can just squash Mim. I think we just go Rapunzel Squash Mim. Although Pongo might... I think Pongo's probably worse than Rapunzel. We might get some really serious advantage. And I don't really mind this Tink dying anymore, so we're just going to quest through it. Yeah. Merlin was expected. One of our characters gets bonked, but we can bonk back and draw two. Start with the draw two. Inca Maui, you love to see that. All right, I'm gonna ink Doc, and uh, it's just Pop Cusco. Mine stays alive. They draw a card, but they can't Wrath next turn. And we'll quest for one. Here you go. Oh, I don't have a Tinkerbell in play anymore. Nice. Flavorful. Hopefully this crab sticks around. Of course. Of course! Bounce it back. The bounce deck. Never in my life have I played against a deck that was more annoying. Ooh. Okay. Could already trade, but all right. Okay, all right. I guess we'll just squash your Merlin. Brayden never lets me get value out of Rapunzel because he played good. And so Rapunzel always bad against good player. All right, no wrath, please. Cross finger. Hurry up, pump my creature. Who cares? Pass. Pass. No, be prepared. I'm going to start doing that on Ink 7. No, be prepared. Rats. Didn't work. I got to work on my pitch. All right, let's start with Tank. Save the Melissa for later. We have five. Mufasa's pretty great on a dry board. We'll take it. We'll just go ahead and play it. Here we go. 
And now, if they kill my Mufasa, I get a uh, look at the top card of my deck and maybe get a giant character. Ooh, Jim Hawkins. Here comes the castle. I'm gonna pop that boy. I oh, gotta pop this hot boy. Bang. Alright. Do some questing. Do some questing. Alright, I don't need more ink. I don't think Doc is very good in this deck, but he could be good in a different matchup or against a different type of opponent. Alright, no wrath. That's great. Maleficent probably gonna be able to kill this castle here. All right, I'm just going to bang the castle just to make sure I don't lose to that type of thing. I'm going to go quest, quest. So I go. Don't really mind if the Tinkerbell dies. Could put some damage on one of my things and then Rapunzel and heal. Okay, they draw a card with Merlin. Maybe they drew Be Prepared. Maybe they're digging for Be Prepared. Maybe they have something that deals three. Ooh, Medusa on the Mufasa? Ancient Battle? Top card. Oh, it's a Medusa. Yeah, put it into play. It's exerted. You can play uh, a rabbit and kill it. Or not rabbit, a fox. Ooh, not good news. Another castle. Oh, you think I'm going to fall for that, huh? Concede? That was so much fun, man. Yeah, your deck is sweet. <laughs> <laughs> I love the the Tinkerbells. The, so I, I didn't look at the deck list before you sent it to me. I want to play it completely in the dark. I love uh, Brennan's concoctions, and I just want to, like, see how the cards played, and I just kind of mulligan how I normally mulligan, you know, the expensive stuff. And the first time I saw Lantern into Tinkerbell in game one, I was like, yes, sign me up. This is what I want to be doing with my life. Yeah, I uh, played this deck in a 1K, which I top eight, and then we split. Oh! Um, Look and, at him go. Uh, this, deck, this deck was a ton of fun. Uh, the only match I lost in the entire event was to a, another Amber Ruby deck, and they were playing Piglets, and I just could not beat Piglet. <laughs> <laughs> could not beat that card. Oh, that's sick. That's sick. Can you, can you, like, I was like sending my... Uh, my mother, my mother goffles into it, just being like, I'm never going to win this game. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, this, this deck is uh, super sweet. All right, one thing I really, one thing I really liked about uh, this Brennan deck is that I was able to concoct some really fun post-be-prepared turns. And while every turn I was just like, please no be prepared, I even sang a song. Do you want to hear my song? Yeah, sure. Go so ahead. I, so I cross my fingers and I close my eyes. I sing. I go, no, be prepared. <laughs> and it didn't work. You had it the time I sang it. So unfortunately, Brutal. you sang the song and I lost that spot anyway. But super fun games, man. Ba uh, great back and forth. Hades was great as always. I mean, unequables, right? They have to be incredibly high power level. And the Hades chain is something that I found very early in set one. And I was like, wow, this is excellent with lanterns. Uh, but we have to have like X number of inkables in our deck. Otherwise it doesn't function. And I think that's kind of still true, but we're kind of getting to the point where the uninkables are so strong in conjunction with the other cards that we have to be a little greedy when it comes to building our, our ink, uh, you know, mapping and in how we sequence in the game sometimes we have to skip our one drop or our two drop in order to be able to hit our ink all the way up to three four or five in order to play our more powerful uninkable spells yeah i think the thing about this deck uh when you look at it is that there are four one drops in the entire deck which is like kind of shocking when you think about like just every other amber deck that exists mm -hmm. but uh you're playing these like you just have bomb after bomb after bomb. Like the every time I kill a Mufasa, I'm like, I'm about to get <laughs> I'm about Dude. to get two for one. Dude, okay, so uh I I haven't played as much as you, so I, I'm kind of like getting the, the the feel for how the games play. And one of my favorite things is discovering when a character can just freely quest. 
can just no one cares like oh man i hope they don't have crab you know i hope they don't have some way to punish me for questing and but there are a yeah. small subset of characters who can just quest they have the ability to quest and no one says hey don't do that that's a mistake and mufasa is one of them <laughs> yeah mufasa is really cool if your deck is just filled with bombs. And oh, yeah. If you're a Mufasa deck, bombs. which this is, right? Lantern and a Mufasa. Yeah. How do you win? I get a free, uh, you know, a free monstrous dragon off the top to kill your monstrous dragon. How can you possibly yeah. win when I, that happens? Yeah. That, that was, uh, I kind of was just waiting for it. You know? <laughs> that was what we talked about when we were, you know, doing set review for the spoiler for set two and you know i hadn't seen it happen yet and that was the first time that i had played with the card and it happened so clearly it happens a reasonable amount of the time or i just got extremely oh, yeah. lucky you know i mean both it's yeah both. can be both it can but, be both i mean you hit stick like if you think about it across all the broken cards you have to hit you have uh four carefree surfers you have four uh, Hades. Hades is actually sick off the top because then you just get to pick. You know what I mean? Like yeah. you just pick the best card. Uh, you have Chernabog. You have the <laughs> yo Chernabog. Real real talk. So uh, when we had uh, discussed cards, you know, I didn't I didn't look at every card that had been made for six months. I felt like maybe that was too much to grok at once and so i've been slowly seeing cards that i hadn't played with or seen yet and i drew a free nine nine when i needed a free creature for my carefree surfer and it was like holy geez this is such a sick card right but yeah it's extremely high risk you know it costs so much to to cast and uh, but like when it does the thing, it's wild. That was a wild card. And, you know, and that's another thing. Like, I feel like Brennan just really hit the nail on the head. Like this deck is fun, but it's also really powerful and full of like some really cool, you know, mythic style uh, characters that uh, don't really see a lot of play in other archetypes, but lanterns and Mufasas and all sorts of other things make them viable. And that's cool. I think. One really important thing about the current metagame is there are actually a variety of decks that you can like surgically play to just attack portions of the metagame. So like if your local game store is just a Ruby Amethyst game store, this Amber Ruby deck is crazy. Like it Maybe. is you're going to win so often. <laughs> and that happens. I have a local game store where everyone plays Emerald Steel. And I can't think off the top of my head what a bad matchup is for that deck. But if like I don't know. Just, I could play a, a counter deck to that. And uh, that's a huge part of this game. It's really fun. Yeah. All right, Braden. Well, thanks for playing one match with me, and uh, we'll see you next time. See you again.